Rockfield Battlefield. I wanted to go back and try and discover what the secret ingredient was from the rock paper scissors style of vehicle combat to the chaotic moment to moment events in infantry combat and to the celebrated only in battlefield moments. What I discover may surprise you. When you dive deep into the combat and pacing of battlefield you discover this underlying factor across all battlefield titles and I'll call it the flow of combat. The strategy and thought put into each spawn which is the type of equipment you will take into each fight. There are outlying play styles that might fall outside this general flow, like going bazillion to zero in a jet, or absolutely slapping an entire lobby with a little bird in Battlefield 4. We may be on the cusp of news of a new Battlefield, there's always little leaks here and there that pop up around the place, so I figured why the hell not, let's dive in and talk about what makes a great Battlefield. To start our journey I wanted to take you back to where it all truly began for me and that would be Battlefield 2. Now specifically we'll dive into the map flow and how player counts affected that flow on a fan favourite map, Striker Carcan. Keep in mind player count because I think that plays a massive part in how a lot of these maps flow and we'll visit that later on. Now we're using this example because it was Battlefield before we had all the destruction and chaos and it's a very simple way to get across these gameplay features. So here we have Striker Karkan. The Americans are assaulting from the south and the MEC are defending from the north. So you've got three possible routes to attack. You go up the flanks or straight up the middle. The prevailing strategy here was to basically push the western flank and go up the hill to suburbs. Suburbs would allow complete map control. It's basically the point of control for this map. You could influence those three center flags. You could basically reach out and touch everything. So from this point, as a defender, you've got multiple options. You can stay defending the front lines. You can respawn at some of the northern points and try and counter the American assault from suburbs, which basically ties into this combat flow I'm talking about. So this has completely changed the dynamic of the map now. The MEC are no longer able to just hold the front line. The Americans have slipped by. So now you have to choose, crap, I have to change my loadout. Maybe I need to go sniper. I want to maybe put some claymores down. Maybe I need to go medic because I'm going to have a few guys on me. All these different things completely change how you play just through one capture of that flag. So now the Americans have got basically authority over the map even though they haven't got them any flags they can spawn on that flank and hit all of those points while still having their uncapped domain so before to carry on americans push through they capture all the flags basically in the middle of the map this leaves hotel cap extremely vulnerable you can lob grenades you can smash them from both directions market was always a horrible place to spawn so you generally whoever had suburbs would capture market pretty quick and Hotel was also dangerous once Suburbs was captured for the defending team. The Americans have pushed through, they've captured those two centre flags. Now, Train Station becomes very vulnerable as well because now you no longer have Hotel to distract the Americans. They can concentrate all their forces on Train and Factory. Any crossing out of Factory going across that little water bridge there, you're asking for trouble. You can throw smokes, but you're pretty much buggered from here unless of course you held up for long enough to get to this point where the Americans don't have enough tickets to push and secure the game so generally like I say Americans will capture train and then the MEC are forced to hold off from here now <laughs> there's quite a few funny strategies around this point here my best mate and I when we were younger he found out that you could hide in the towers here and here as support and just throw infinite grenades onto train and we ended up going from losing the game to winning because he just had this ridiculous grenade spam and and just it was it was absolutely stupid so that's probably one of those outlying sort of play styles <laughs> that just breaks the game anyway so in a normal situation the MEC are buggered from here but if we were to go back to this point here where the Americans have taken the two middle flags and suburbs the MEC do have an opportunity to slip out from the western side and actually come up behind and capture suburbs again. This would happen quite often 
most players who had been playing for quite a while understood this map would make that move which would then give the MEC authority back over the map and would then put the two middle flags of the Americans in a very vulnerable position I would say these two flags are the two most vulnerable on this map simply because of the control that suburbs has generally from here the MEC would sweep back through while they're doing that a reasonably good American team would be able to at least capture hotel or the first flag and you'd have a linear fight and the same sort of combat would play out throughout this map I should have prefaced this by saying as well this is a 32 player map so this is 16 versus 16 and it was a really nice number to allow flanking routes to allow the ability to engage and get out of combat if there were too many of them and lure your opponents into traps if you're a sniper or something like that throw a couple of claymores down get a couple of shots and lob some grenades over you could hold them up until your teammates got there to support you so for me that's at the core of all the battlefields really it goes through battlefield one battlefield five battlefield four battlefield three all of those modes with conquest that for me is the backbone of battlefield now you throw in the mix the destruction you throw in vehicles all of that it makes it absolute chaos and so much fun but here's the thing if you were to throw 64 players into strike a and it just becomes this chaotic mess and it's so hard to get in flank behind you've basically got to have vehicles and a bit of an armor column and you try and punch through the front line on that map on strike a car can there and then and then you can start doing all the back capping and stuff like that which is another strategy in itself you know and it, once again it just changes the way you play the game so we can go through all the battlefields and you see the same thing over and over and over again you, you play with your mates and stuff like that and most of the conversation you're having is where are we going to spawn yet next oh they're capturing this point let's spawn over here and we'll counter them or you know our team's pushing here let's push from this other angle and try and cut them off or whatever there's just always been this built in to battlefield experience of more tactical gameplay and more thought out gameplay and i feel like if you add too many players to the experience you actually take away from that now every time i play something like 2042 on 128 players or whatever it is yeah 128 players there's just fucking people everywhere it's just absolute chaos it's a lot of fun don't get me wrong but i feel it takes away in a little bit to what that core element of battlefield is you know you have less influence over the fight you have less influence over the combat and it's just a little bit less rewarding for me personally like i really enjoy pushing in with my with my mates or with my squad and you know you got your four guys or what depending on what game you're playing you might be six but generally four guys you can go in and you can actually capture an objective with you and your squad and you can hold it but when you have too many players it just becomes way too chaotic there's just fucking dudes everywhere and it becomes way more difficult to hold down an angle to hold down a position or hold down a capture point now when 2042 first dropped the map was just so sparse and so difficult to basically conceal yourself that you were just exposed to so many angles you could get shot from anywhere now the, the updates have fixed that to an extent but with that 128 players it still doesn't really accommodate that gameplay where you've got those flanking routes now most of the times when i play 2042 i try and play the 64 player game modes like exodus conquest and when when it's in the rotation and I have so much more fun playing that because it it allows that freedom of movement so I think that's why for me maybe 2042 isn't the be all and end all battlefield I think DICE have put themselves in an interesting position where they've done this 128 player thing and it's been reasonably successful but I'm sure there's plenty of other players out there who really do miss that tactical style of battlefield i wouldn't say slower pace but it, you have more influence over the battlefield and you can be a little bit more thought out in what you do i would say it's why there's still a lot of players through the older titles there's still heaps of people playing bf1 bf4 bf5 still some guys playing bf3 as well i think something else that 
it misses the mark with as well is when you're fighting for some of these objectives on the older titles you can get into a real skirmish with maybe another squad or something like that and it almost there's almost a little bit more of a like personal feeling to it you're just going tit for tat back and forth with another squad you chat to each other in the in the little chat there and with a bit of a ban bit of banter or whatever just 128 players just completely takes away from that and of course they've removed the ability to talk to the opposite team as well which is just nonsense so the flow of combat it just runs through and it plays so much better in those older games than what it does in bf 2042 with 128 players these are just my thoughts i just had to sit down and have a few rounds of 2042 and i did have fun you know if you try and push an objective if you try push them with your team it's just chaos so i ended up just i guess falling back to my play style which is generally sniper i would get on an angle and just hang back a bit and you know support my team assaulting and just get shit loads of kills but it kind of just gets a little bit boring and a little bit stale and then they add bots in to make up the player count and it's it just takes away from the experience in my opinion i think it's not it's not really the battlefield that i remember and it's not really the battlefield that i enjoy i'm not shitting on 2042 i just think it's the 128 players has just really changed that experience and you've got game modes and maps and the other battlefields like the metros and your lockers and they're just absolute meat grinders and that's fun and it's the same kind of experience so i i kind of tend to not really play those game modes too much because it can get a little bit samey and a little bit boring but when you get to the bigger maps with flanking routes and stuff that's just for me that's that's what battlefield is that's where battlefield's roots are and i really hope dice take that into account moving forward and and going into the next battlefield that's my two cents on what makes battlefield battlefield if you made it all the way to the end of this video i'd love it if you left some comments below and gave me your thoughts otherwise thanks for watching and thanks for your time cheers